Hello, I am Venkat Athriya. I traveled to Hong Kong and visited many tourist attractions. I have uploaded my videos on YouTube, my website, Athriya Travel Blog. This video is exclusively showing the Hong Kong Museum. Tourist visiting Hong Kong should not miss the museum. A small tiny fishing village turned out to be a great commercial country. Growth of tourism is tremendous. Hong Kong has witnessed many rulers, invaders and migrant occupants. Hong Kong, a favorite destination among tourists after Singapore. With the Hong Kong Tourist Guided Map, solo travelers can easily travel with the help of metro rail and buses. Octopus, card like a debit card can be loaded with Hong Kong dollars and widely used. Need not stand in queue, accepted in metro rail buses, departmental store etc. Solo travelers can find several hostels in Hong Kong. Chung King Mansions is centrally located, opposite to Tsim SHA Tsui Metro Station. Several hotels and restaurants are in the building. Many stores are open 24-7. Hong Kong History Ken Han started his inhabitants from 214 BC to 330 AD. Eastern Jin ruled from 331 AD to 756 AD. Tang ruled from 757 AD to 1572 AD. Ming ruled from 1573 AD to 1665 AD. King governed from 1666 AD to 1668 AD. Buddhism flourished during the Jin period. Many monks came from India and Central Asia. Hong Kong Museum of History and Science Museum, are located near its SHHU East Metro Station. The collections of the museum encompass natural history, archaeology, ethnography and local history. Before Hong Kong, became a British colony in the mid-19th century. Four Chinese ethical groups were living in Hong Kong. 1. Punti 2. Hakka 3. Boat Dwellers 4. Hoklu. Puntis came with Song Dynasty, they settled in the fertile lands. Hakka migrated much later to Punti. Seaborne boat dwellers lived in the sea. Hoklu were fishermen. Around 12th day of first Chinese lunar month, a lighting lantern ceremony is held in Hong Kong's clan based villages. Chinese clans, a patriarchal organization. Arranged marriages, were standard practice in tradition Chinese society. The fortune teller or astrologer, calculates and checks the astrological details of young couple. If they are compatible, they would arrange to meet their prospective son or daughter-in-law. Upon mutual satisfaction they would confirm the marriage engagement. The groom's family would then send the required betrothal gifts to the bride's family. Marriages were usually held at the end of the year when farming activities had ceased. On the eve of the wedding, the couple would each conduct a hair combing ceremony that symbolized their passage to adulthood. The groom's family would engage a good life woman, a woman who had enjoyed a long, prolific marriage life to perform a bed installing fertility rite, in the nuptial chamber. On the wedding day, the bride, would be carried to her groom's house, in a decorated bridal sedan chair. During the wedding ceremony, the couple, would kneel and bow, first to heaven and earth. Then, the groom's ancestors and parents. A banquet would be held in the evening. The invited guests would bless the couple. The bride would be bought to the groom's house on a auspicious day. On 24th of January 1841, the British warship Silver sailed into Hong Kong waters, and troops landed the next morning. Other warships followed on 26th January. The British flag was raised, and amidst the boomerang sound of the gun salute, the formal occupation of Hong Kong Island was proclaimed in British's name. The landing spot was later named as Possession Point. The site in Sheng Wan has now become the Hollywood Road Park. Possession Street is nearby. The Treaty of Nanking, the main body of this treaty, comprises 13 articles. The third article stipulates, the cession of Hong Kong Island to Britain, as a Far East base for the British, to store their goods and repair their ships. Britain forced another concession from China 
Under the lease signed on 9 June 1898, it took control of what was to become the new territories. The expiry of the 99-year lease on 30 June 1997 became the fulcrum for Hong Kong's return to China. After Britain took possession of the Hong Kong, the island was declared a free port. This attracted a constant flow of goods, capital investment, industry and talent. By the late 19th century, with the harbor's basic construction in place, Hong Kong, was handling more than half of China's foreign trade and its annual entrepot trade totaled £50 million sterling. Within 20 years, of becoming a port as many as 73 foreign firms, were established in Hong Kong. By 1893, foreign businesses which had set up headquarters have numbered 98 firms and six banks and trade volume for that year exceeded £20 million sterling. The Population Survey in 1847, found that of the 23,872 inhabitants, 603 were Europeans, 264 Portuguese and 539 Indians, Malays and other non-Chinese. Among the Indians, the Sikhs were usually recruited as police from 1867. After 155 years of colonial rule, Hong Kong was finally returned to the motherland on 1 July 1997. Thus starting a new chapter in its history. The handover ceremony, took place in the Convention and Exhibition Center, on the evening of 30 June 1997. It was officiated by Chinese President Zhang Zemin, and the Prince of Wales. Mr. Tong Chi HWA was solemnly sworn in as the first chief executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. The Golden Bahania Square is an open area in Wan Chai, Hong Kong. Square was named after the giant statue of a Golden Bahania Blakena at the center of the area, situated outside the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center, where the ceremonies for the handover of Hong Kong and the establishment of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region were held in July 1997. A flag-raising ceremony is held every day at 8 a.m. It is considered a tourist attraction. The sculpture, a gilded flower bahania, is 6 meters high. The major part is composed of a bahania on a base of red granite pillar on a pyramid. The sculpture is deemed an important symbol for the Hong Kong people after the handover. On the second day of Chinese New Year and National Day of the People's Republic of China, the square is lighted up by a firework show. The Golden Bahania has also been nicknamed the Golden Pak Shui by locals. The official daily flag-raising ceremony at the Golden Bahania Square located outside the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center is conducted by the Hong Kong Police Force. There are three types of ceremonies, daily flag-raising ceremony, daily, every day except first of each month, enhanced flag-raising ceremony, on the first of every month, except July and October and the special flag-raising ceremony, 1st of July and 1st of October. The daily ceremony includes regular attire and includes the playing of the national anthem, while the enhanced ceremony includes a flag-raising party of Hong Kong police officers, accompanied by a rifle unit all in ceremonial dress, and also includes the playing of the national anthem by the police band followed by a 10-minute musical performance by the police pipe band. <laughs>